Start applauding for Sarah Ann. Don't stop until she starts talking. Go, 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 go. Hi, everyone. I am so excited to be here to share with you a program Rutgers started last year to do our part in diversifying this field. My name is Sarah Ann Stanway. I'm a Hack and Y fellow, a Twilio intern, and the president of Rutgers Computer Science Club and I do not belong here. No, seriously. I never had any organic interest in computer science, and it was only at the urging of my brother, who was making waves in his college tech community when I was in high school, that I decided to try coding and discovered I loved it. I'd like to do a little experiment. If you first started exploring this field, not because of your own organic interest, but at the encouragement of a friend, family member, or teacher, please stand up. All right, look around. If you identify by gender or race as an underrepresented minority, please remain standing if you feel comfortable doing so. All right, thank you, take a seat. So that's a decent number of people. My story, many of our stories, are the product of privilege. The privilege of having family and friends in the tech industry of attending a high school where I could explore computer science classes, and last but not least, of being able to afford the tools I needed to start learning on my own. I believe that we have a responsibility to pay that favor forward. I'm sure we've all heard and seen the diversity crisis in tech, but last year, I did a little bit of research to start learning about when it starts. According to a study by Microsoft, girls lose interest in STEM and computer science as time goes on. In middle school, 31% of girls believe that jobs requiring coding and programming are not for them. By the time they reach high school, it jumps to 40%, and when they're in college, 51% of girls count themselves out of these jobs. And as for the remaining 49%, on average, women only compose about 20% of introductory computer science classes. Even if we retain all of them, that's still a pretty dismal failure. Depressing, right? But don't worry, I do have some good news. When young girls are shown real-world examples of women in tech doing work that actually appeals to them, those numbers change dramatically. And clearly, if we want to make an impact, it has to start young, and it has to start by changing perceptions. Rutgers' solution to this was the development of our virtual classroom visit program, which allows us to reach schools of any income bracket, in any location, at any time. So what is a virtual classroom visit? Simply put, it's a Google Hangouts call. We take a two or three person panel of undergraduates and typically we'll spend about 30 minutes talking to kids middle school age. In the beginning of the call, we have our video disabled and we ask students to answer questions like, what gender am I? What race am I? How long have I been coding? And this is an opportunity to engage students in discussion about perception and misconception and the effects of gendered bias and expectation. We also ask why they're not interested in tech. It's always an interesting uh, few answers. And from there, we're able to share with them our experiences and show how the reasons that they think tech isn't fun or wouldn't suit them are often not the case. But most importantly, we talk about our hacks. We share the creativity and the spirit of learning that makes this such an awesome field to be in, and we get kids excited about learning. We didn't forget about the importance of visibility. Every VCV panel includes at least one woman, and most include a member of an underrepresented racial or ethnic minority. Because there's a lot of power in seeing someone who looks like yourself in this kind of role, so you can start seeing yourself in this kind of role. VCVs are crafted to appeal to all kinds of potential hackers. By telling kids how much money we make in our summer internships, we spark interest, especially in those from low-income brackets. Stories about hackathons and curiosity-driven learning engage students who may not thrive in a classroom setting, and examples of technology as a tool for social good are often especially exciting for girls. Here's a sample of some of the feedback we've gotten so far. 
One student was impressed that a panelist, who actually was an alumna from her middle school, took classes she wasn't confident in for the sake of her curiosity and learning. Another connected with a panelist's story about failure and persistence and learned that it was okay to struggle when he was first learning to code. I started the VCV program last year with the hope of scaling it nationally, and we have, thanks in huge part to the efforts of our new outreach director, Ben Yang. Recently, we snagged a 17,000 student school district that wants a, v for every, a VCV for every one of their students and will be featured on cs for nj as a resource for teachers. We have data collection ready to go and lesson plans built so that anyone who is interested can host a VCV. All, all VCV. All we need now are university partners. If you are interested in helping us scale this program nationally and someday internationally so that every kid has the opportunity to join our hacker community, I'd love to get in touch. Thank you so much.